Today we will be looking at uh, the latest addition to my collection of Next uh, machines and it is this Next Station Turbo Color. Um, it is of the slab format and I did uh, already open this up and had a look inside and this is how um, it came. Um, it does have the battery, which is absolutely vital um, for this thing to power up. And I measured it, the voltage seems okay. But it did not have a CPU, which was, I think, towards the beginning of 33 megahertz, 68 or 40. No RAM, no hard disk, which is okay. I've had bad luck with these SCSI based hard drives um, in some of my other next stations and so so we'll be using one of these instead a SCSI 2SD um, I believe this is the version 5.2 I've successfully used this in one of my other next uh, stations I already went ahead and formatted the SD card with um, two two gigabyte partitions and I put a next step uh, 3.3 image on the first uh, partition. I believe the SCSI IDs are 3 and 4 or 4 and 5. Um, that was the default it came with. How to do that I'll put a link in the description below so we'll be putting that in here. I'll put it on a piece of plastic for now to avoid it shorting out. And then Black Hole Inc. came to the rescue and I got a CPU to put into the system. This is only a 25 megahertz, 68040. And I also got some RAM to put into the system. This will be the maximum of 128 megabytes. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, put those in. Now for the CPU, orientation is key. It is missing a pin here. And so should go on like this. Connect the SCSI to SD card. Now this does not need to be uh, powered. It should get enough power from the SCSI bus. Uh, at least that's my experience having used this in other machines before most other machines. So we should be okay. Let's have a quick look at the ports on the back, since that has a few interesting quirks. Um, it does have a SCSI port, two serial ports. These are not where the mouse and the keyboard get connected to. DSP, digital signal processor, I believe, uh, port. This is the video port, um, and it has a, I don't remember the name of it, um, I'll blend it in but it was a very typical connector for that area for Unix workstations in general. The printer port uh, to network power and these fins are for the power supply to try and keep it cool. And look at how proud they were of every piece of equipment. Everything has the next logo on it. Even every single one of the plugs and connectors. Now, as I mentioned, this does not plug in anywhere at the back of this machine. Um, for the mono versions and the cubes and the next computer, this would go into the back of the monitor, which is then hooked up uh, to the slab or the cube with a video cable that carries both uh, the video signal, uh, keyboard, mouse, as well as power. But we don't have that here. Instead, what we have is this thing here, uh, the sound box. And that contains almost identical circuitry to what those monitors would contain. 
uh, the signal from the machine would go in here and then the keyboard connects to this plug over here uh, in such and then you can hook in hook up external um, audio if you want but usually sound will come out of here and then you would use this custom Y cable here um, to plug into the video port at the back and then this would go into the sound box and again next logo everywhere and then to the color monitor I don't have a color monitor so what we're going to do is to use this replacement also from Black Hole Inc. Not affiliated, but excellent source of all things next. And I have yet to open this, but what this will do is it's also a breakout cable. It does plug into um, the back of the color turbo and then does connect with the sound box and then as for the monitor it has a regular VGA connector. Okay, moment of truth. We'll also plug in the next station and of course even the power supply is adorned with a big next logo. Power up goes via the keyboard. Fingers crossed. And we have an image. Okay, loading from network. Let's open the ROM monitor. That seems to be the default whenever it's been powered off or uh, had the battery disconnected for some time. So we now need to reconfigure it to boot from uh, the SCSI bus. And I believe we can simply do uh, boot from SCSI disk BSD and see if that works. SCSI target 3, that I believe is the correct ID for that first 2 gigabyte partition. And we have 128 megabytes of RAM. So far everything seems to be working as expected. SCSI 2 SD, REV 4.2. Warning, clock not set properly. And the image that I've put on there uh, will be booting for the first time, so it should and uh, land us in setup mode. And there is the color screen perfect. So far, so good. Now let's see if we can adjust that image a little bit. Okay, this will do for now. At least it's center. Oops. I've never used these controls before. Uh, let's see if the mouse, the mouse seems to work. Perfect. Okay. The other thing I want to try out is hooking up this beauty to it. This is an original next uh, CD-ROM drive, which I have not tested, and it will be connected through the 
SCSI bus. It's set to ID1, which ideally shouldn't clash with um, the existing SD card setup. So we'll put that up here. And look at that massive cable. Up we boot. And once this is done, command and tilde will get us into the ROM monitor to change the setup, the boot setup. Okay, loading from network is not going to happen. So command tilde, we have the ROM monitor. Now for setup, I believe, all right, let's try that again. Apparently the right command would have been P for setting parameters. So again, we'll wait until it tries to boot from the network. And command tilde gets us in the ROM monitor. P. Boot command. We don't want Ethernet, we want SD SCSI disk. DRAM tests, so the rest we leave on the defaults. And we will continue to boot from SCSI disk BSD. Okay. Now let's go through setup and explore the system a little bit. We are in the United States. Yes. No, come on, don't hang. I'm very excited, this is the first time I'm seeing this user interface in color, since I only have mono slabs and a cube without a dimension board. So this is super exciting. Oh, it is a 33 megahertz, 68040, 128 megabytes, two gigabyte disk. Okay, now that we've changed the settings, let's go through another boot up and see, should be booting automatically from the uh, SCSI 2SD partition now. Excellent, there we go. It's loading from disk and not the network anymore. Okay, I don't hear anything, so I'm assuming that maybe the sound box has some issues. Okay, so there's a few things to do with the system as is. It seems to work, the new processor and memory uh, got it back to life. Most of the keyboard seems to work. The mouse is working. The sound box is not. So maybe I'll hook up an external uh, speaker to see if sound at least gets passed through correctly. Uh, the CD drive does not work. I have to open it up and figure out how to get the caddy back out. But 
um, for the moment it does not work. But yeah, I have a working next station turbo color, so I'm happy about that. And of course, some restoration work will follow. That was it for a bit of an exploration of the system. Uh, stay tuned for some updates on trying to get some of these things fixed. Until then, thank you for watching.